Hey friends, in this video, I'll be showing you the beginning to end process of how I tie dye. Keep in mind, I'm still kind of an amateur, but an amateur who is starting to make good money. And you will also see the reveal of the three shirts from my giveaway. On my Instagram page, I sponsored a giveaway from reaching 17,000 community members, followers, and I offered to create three custom shirts, small, medium, large, and everyone sent their colors. We did a drawing and I picked the winners and I will be revealing the winner's shirts in the, at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. So I want to show you some of the supplies that I use for tie dyeing. Okay, um, definitely I start off with a shirt. I like to, for the purpose of selling, use new white shirts. Um, I use Gildan t-shirts. They're a little stiffer, but I've switched over to Hanes because they're really comfortable and soft. I use men's unisex shirts. It's nice and comfortable. See that? This is fresh out of the pack. So that's why it has like this wrinkly look, but this is Hanes Comfort Blend. This is a large. So I start off with a white t-shirt. You can, of course, use any t-shirt. This shirt was in a pile of things that Thomas brought home. This, the neck was already cut off and I cut it the rest of the way off and just threw some tie-dye on it and decided to use it as a shirt to wear around the house. So perfect for this video. But of course, I start with a white t-shirt and again, it is a men's um, Hanes undershirt but again don't waste money i buy these in bulk and because this is like my another business for me now so i'm going to use as many new shirts as i can and it also incorporate some other shirts that are in good condition to create sustainable fashion so the first thing is this white t-shirt the second thing is a pack of rubber bands you can use string um, on occasion if I'm making some bigger items, like eventually I'll probably move on to some sheets or something like that. And only things that I find around the house, or maybe if I'm at the bins or whatever, not spending a lot of money for some new sheets or, or towels or blankets or anything like that. But if rubber bands is the way to go, I get these from the dollar store. So I'll be going to the dollar store again this week. I'll get about three or four packs just to have them. So um, rubber bands, this one, I like this pack because it has several different sizes and is great for um, any project that you might have. And so these are my dollar store, Dollar Tree for anyone who goes to the Dollar Tree. And of course, I need dye. I'm just showing you these, I have tons. I use Rit dye and um, these are synthetic, but I use them for everything, but the synthetic is perfect. So if you're using for, you know, delicate fabrics like silk or something like that, then you want to really pay attention. So I use Rit Dye. Dye kits are perfect for when you're first starting out, but if you realize you're going beyond a project, you're going to have to really invest in something different. So these right here, you add water and you can dilute, make it as light or dark as you want. So Rit Dye is what I use. And if you're into like, you know, natural products you can use fruit beets vegetables things like that but you can also purchase natural dyes so amazon is a great resource you can go to michael's joann's fabrics or directly to the retailer um, online for these okay squirt bottles this is where i pour my dye in and i add water so i put dye into about here and then i add water I, again, is more amateur for me. I'm not trying to get into special designs and all that. So I do what makes me feel good. It's been a work in progress for like the last month. So I'm at a place where I know what works and how the color is going to turn out. So here is my squirt bottles, a must. Amazon for, I think it was eight in the pack. Gloves, really important. You can use disposable, but these have been a game changer for me. I went through a box of disposable and this is what I purchased at the dollar store. Get several, again, I'm going back to the dollar store when I get more rubber bands to get these. Um, the first pair lasted me three weeks and then they started getting holes and things because I do tie-dye or bleach every day. I think the bleach is what um, created the holes. So these just regular rubber gloves, I'm an extra large, so I was happy to find these and these are too cute. Anyway, and then I have a 
pan that I use. I don't soak. I'm going to show you what I do with the, this. Paper towel is a must for cleanup and I do use a cleaner and I use these plastic bags and you'll see what I use these for. So these are all my products and welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> I'm first gonna start with rubber bands, a bag of rubber bands. You can use string, rope, yarn, but I prefer rubber bands. I get these from the dollar store and I'm just gonna dump a bunch of them out on the table it's easily to it's more easy to do that and then I'm going to start off with clean white shirts I do use shirts that have been repurposed but for the purpose of this video and um, for the purpose of my contest winners I just so happen to be making the shirts I did had a contest on my Instagram page for reaching 17,000 community members 17,000 followers and I decided to create three custom shirts for them and so you're going to watch me do that and so what today is I'm going to show you the pattern that I'm using I'm going to use the spiral pattern okay this is my small shirt start off with this and you just have a clean white shirt you can bunch a shirt if you want and put rubber bands on it and put color in it's going to come out you can do you can do a bullseye where you take the middle and you rubber band it and then you rubber band all around today i'm going to do my favorite and of course the most easiest which is the spiral well the bunching is easier but i like the spiral better so for this when you spiral you just grab from the middle and then you twist around and you just come together you just pull the shirt around on a spiral like that and then you take your rubber bands and you place them i would suggest placing in the, the places that are the most loose first which are the arms like here and then that, when I do it that way, it helps me determine how many rubber bands I'm going to use. You don't have to use 20 rubber bands to create a nice spiral, as you can see here. And then I'll take another one, and then I'll see what it looks like. Something's a little loose. You can move your rubber band around, or you can stick another rubber band, and that's what I'll do. I'm going to stick another rubber band in here, like that. And this is what this looks like there. Okay. And so now I have the medium shirt, which is here, lay that out. Now, this is a trick that I learned. If you don't wanna use your hand, you can take a regular everyday fork and you start from the middle again and you take your fork and you place it in the middle of the fabric like so and you just twist it. And this will give you the same type of spiral and you have to make sure everything goes around in the same direction and then I'm just going to pull my fork out and then there is my spiral and then rubber band again like so and try not to if you can if you want you can use really small rubber bands or real tight depending on how you want I don't make them too big or too small and you don't have to be perfect even in selling I'm not perfect because in a sense I'm still of course an amateur and still learning but I try to do as simple as possible and so there's that I try to make sure as much of the fabric is in as I can have it and then here is this large so and I'm going to use the fork technique again that goes real fast and I just spiral everything around I'm going to dump out some more rubber bands because I like the bigger ones like this in this pack they, I guess they would be considered medium so my shirt is unspiraling so I'm going to do it again because I really want it to be as much in as possible let's do the fork one more time and it's all about making mistakes and having fun that's what I like I try to have fun if I'm doing something like this it's 100% fun because when it becomes stressful there's no need for me to do it anymore
if I wasn't on camera, this probably be working a little bit more smoother. But since I'm doing this for you, um, I have rubber bands popping all over the place. Here we go. And there. And then one last. And I usually put enough rubber bands in spaces that or puffy or sticking out so that I don't have to fight with the fabric. And then there's that there. Okay, so I work in my bathroom. <laughs> I don't have any um, a utility sink in my basement or anything. So I tie dye in my bathroom. And um, I cleaned everything off the sink for purpose. So, so here are all my supplies. I'm gonna go through and show you the process right now of how I mix the colors together. Just showing you everything that I have set up. I'm gonna show you how I mix the colors together and then go through the tie-dye process and show you everything step-by-step. Step. So as I showed in the beginning, I use RIT dye. This is a synthetic dye. I use all of the dyes. It doesn't make a difference because the RIT is hard to get these days because everyone seems to be tie-dyeing. So synthetic is just more specifically if you're using a fabric like silk or something that you have to be really gentle with. So you can use this for anything. So always I suggest you read the directions. I've done that because I've been doing this for a while. So here is my teal. Now I have a couple other, I have orange and here is a sapphire blue that I'm using. I'm using this apple green. Colors, again, are really hard to get, so I just get green for the purpose of green, doesn't matter. I'm using black, and then I already have some colors that have been pre-poured. So I'm gonna just show you really quick how I measure. And I use a squirt bottle, and I pour about this much into the bottle, and then I fill the rest with water. I'm right at the sink and then this is what it fills up to and then I just put top on and I suggest that you shake your dye bottles ahead of time so I'm going to do the same thing with the orange pull about the same amount you eyeball it and you also get used to it if you're doing this often figuring out the dilution I'm not going to get into measurements and all that three quarters and you know so I just fill, and this is a small bottle. I have a larger bottle, which is, I use it for my green most of the time. This, I had already had this. So with my green, you fill up to about here. And this is as far as you want your water to go or it'll be too thin unless you really want it to be thin. Okay, so my other bottles have been filled. I'm gonna show you those really quick. I just wanted to show you for the purpose of the video because I already had some. So for this video, I'm doing a teal, an orange, and what I do for my sake, for my sanity, is I put the bottle behind the actual dye bottle behind the color so that I don't mix anything up. So this is the teal because this looks like a blue. You can't really tell, and I'm going to be working with blue. So I leave the bottles behind each other. I'm using a black today. Green is clearly, I can clearly see green. So here's green. And I'm going to turn this over for you to see. I keep this in the bathroom. I have a little container and I have all these bottles. So sometimes they're empty and sometimes they're not, depending on how active I am during the week. I'm using a blue. I have a little bit of purple left. I'm using that. And that's going to be it for the shirts that I'm doing today. So stay tuned for the next process. So as I indicated before, the shirts that I'm making today are for my contest winners from my Instagram feed. And I'm going to start off with a small. I already showed you how I wrap these. They're in spiral. You can decide how you want to spiral these colors out. You don't know how they're going to turn out, but I like to do a lot of different things. So hopefully the person who gets this will like it. The person who wanted small wanted black and orange as their color. So I'm going to, let's see if I can turn that, move that up a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to do this here. So here's my black dye. 
and here's my orange dye. I'm gonna use orange first. Now, again, it's up to you to play around with the colors, okay? I'm gonna grab a bag real quick. Okay, so I have a, I'm putting this plastic bag aside so I can grab it in a minute. That train is always coming when I'm doing videos. It's the weirdest thing. Okay, so I just start with my orange. Sorry, friends. It's, I already started and this train is always going. That's just show you real life. And as you can see, I'm not trying to be perfect. Some people, you know, who do this, what they consider professionally. I've seen people who do this professionally. This is professional to me. I have, you know, I do make money doing this. But the fun thing is that I'm making it fun. So the cool thing is I'm making it fun. And the dye goes right in. <clears throat> this is, sometimes people soak them. I don't soak my shirts. I will soak porous things. Like I just tie-dyed some canvas bags. And the first time I did it, the dye wouldn't go through. So I soaked them for just, I just ran some water over them in the bags. Only the ink only took a little bit. But then I end up soaking the bags for about 30 minutes and then it worked better the next time around. Okay, so that's the orange. You want to make sure it kind of soaks in really well. Okay. And you just want to be careful. You don't want it to get all over the place. And then I'm going to put a little bit more just kind of in the top. I don't really like working with black, but this person asked for black because black tends to get all over and you have to really be ready to move with the black. So that's all the orange I'm gonna use. I just wanna make sure it's, it gets in there really well. The second process will make ensure that it sits. As you can see, I don't soak mine. You can do that if you're using one color. I never do that. And so that's the orange and here's the black. And so you just come in right over top and in the extra spaces, I'm going to put the black. So make sure your black is really, sh you shake it up really well because it will leave like little spots if you don't shake it up. It separates, especially if you don't use black a lot and you leave it in the bottle for a while. So this is gonna soak through, but you can squeeze it in between. You can do whatever you want. And I just love seeing how these things turn out. So this is, I didn't tuck this in very well. So of course, all of this is gonna be black. Like some people, they really know what part of the shirt, like see now it's black getting over. I try not to touch as many areas as I can because then you're gonna have like a few areas that black is just kind of hanging out. And, and then I squeeze in there a little bit and I let that go in there. And I try not to touch all around with the black because again, it will spread. So that's the orange and black. And then the next thing I do is I take and I put it into a bag. And then I close the bag up. And then I stick it into a bin on the other side. Let me take this off and show you. There is the bin that I stick the bag in. And that's gonna sit overnight. So we're gonna to go to the next shirt. Okay, so I'm back. I gave myself time to clean up. As you can see, the sink is clean. And I also took a minute to wait for the trash can and the, tr the trash company and the, the, the train to pass by. So my second shirt for my second winner, the medium size winner, here's the white shirt. My colors are green. And then I have a blue here. Let me take this top off really quick. And I'm really big prepper. I put everything together first so that I'm not scrambling around. This is how I work, even if I wasn't making a video. So the blue is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna play around with the blue and the green a little bit. So for the blue and the green, I'm going to do like this. The green, I'm gonna just put all on the top or the bottom, depending on what it looks like in the end. So I'm just gonna squirt that all in there like that, all on the top. And then I'm making sure I get it in there really well so that it soaks in there. 
and see that's what the bottom looks like because I haven't done anything to that yet and then I'm just going to let a little bit come on the side here and then come down like that and come down like this okay and a little there so that again this is going to be totally different and then I'm going to flip it over for my blue, and then I'm gonna put my blue on the bottom or the top again. It's all about interpretation. And so in all the white spots, and you want it to blend over. That's, that's the purpose of tie-dye. So it's not like I'm putting blue on the green. The green is already soaked in to a point, so the blue isn't going to compromise it in any way. They're just going to blend together. And you just want to put as much on there. My blue is almost gone, so I'm going to use that all up. And you just look to make sure you don't see any white spots. I mean, of course, inside the t-shirt, there's going to be like white spots, but it, it's going to soak. So, that's the blue on one side and the green on the other side. And again, I have my trusty bag because I don't soak them in water. I stick them in here. And if I tie-dye in the morning, and I just twist them down, they just need to be closed in. And that's what that looks like. If I tie-dye in the morning, I'll come back by 7 at night and then rinse out. If I tie-dye in the evening at 7, then I'll leave them overnight to sit and start in the morning. So I tie-dye. If I have a lot of orders, I tie-dye twice a day in the morning. I rinse and then tie-dye some more. And then in the afternoon or evening, I rinse the morning set and then tie-dye and let it sit overnight. Okay, so I've cleaned up from the blue and green. Now I'm on my last contest winner shirt. This is a size large and she requested purple and teal. And teal is so pretty, I really like it. And so again, we're gonna do this one different than the first two, the first one being the orange and the black, the second, the blue and the green. And so this is gonna be different. This is gonna be like side to side. So I only have a little purple left. So I'm gonna start with the blue because I have more to work with. And I even still have some teal in the bottle here. So for the teal, I'm gonna do half and half, whereas the other ones I did in between, I did on the top for the blue and the green. And this, I'm going to do um, something like this. And it's probably going to be a little bit more teal, just because, again, I have more teal than I do. Uh-oh. Than I do... Um, with the purple. And again, unless you're doing custom, like real custom, these people, they only suggested specific colors. I don't get custom. I've always been that way, even when it comes to like baking and stuff. I try not to do that because then people aren't satisfied. Now on this, I'm hoping that people are satisfied. I'm giving these away for free because it was a contest, but I thought it would be something different and creative for the community. And it's, it's been such a great response. So this is literally all the purple I have. So I'm trying to let it get in there really well. And then where, when I run out of purple, I'll just fill in with the blue. And, and that's again, the cool thing about tie dye. And it actually looks like I don't have enough purple. And I try to squeeze to the point that I know it's gonna like soak into the fabric. So that's the end of my purple and that worked out perfectly well as you can see this is real life nothing rehearsed here <laughs> and then I see a little some light spots and I'll come back with the teal that teal is going to be really pretty and everything looks really dark until you rinse it it's definitely going to lighten up but it's also going to sit so as you can see here's my purple and then here's my teal no particular pattern it's going to be spiral but we'll just have to be surprised so again it goes into my bag and I just wind it up. These bags are recycled um, bags I used to use for inventory, bags that come with packaging. So they're recycled and I'm not using new plastic. Okay, so my contest 
tie-dye shirts are done. Now I'm just doing some random shirts. Again, I don't do custom orders. I make all these shirts and then go into my Etsy store. It's just better for me. People will find what they want, colors that they like. This is in the brown family. Let me stick this here. Let me this open. As you can see from this, this is going to be light. When it comes out, but that'll be good because it won't be too overwhelming. And actually what I'm going to do is I want to put a little bit more of this on there. As you can see, these are in the brown families. And I'm actually going to take a brown from here. Just making sure it's brown. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit of brown in there into some of the lighter spots. So I think one was top um, camel. And then, as you can see, I sprinkled some brown just to kind of give it a little bit of contrast and then this is going into a bag and then I go clean up okay so for this next shirt again I love tie-dye play this is going to be green and teal so I like to use I don't waste any colors I try to use all the colors that I have again as you can see I have colors here in the bottle I try not to waste them, so I try to come up with ideas of colors that are already poured so that I'm not having bottles sit around. So I'm going to take this green, and I just like playing. That's the fun thing about tie-dye to me. It's like same as baking. You never know how something's going to come out. You try some different recipes, and it's this is such a cool thing for me just to do something like this and just play. It's art, it's creative. And when I'm doing this, my mind is so relaxed and in such a space of zen that how could anything bother you? And then you can turn around and you know, make some money. So here's the teal. Don't worry, I'll reveal them to you. I'll show you what they look like. And the longer these sit, the better they'll come out. Again, so I'm gonna squeeze all this, the rest of this teal out. And the goal is to just cover up. And that's the end of the teal. So I'm gonna take this, uh, I'm gonna take the green and just fill in some of the white little areas there. And there you go. So. And then again, this goes into a bag. I put everything into bags. It's just easier. And it sits and soaks. And so stay tuned for the next video. Okay, here's my last shirt. And what I'm going to do is have a little bit of fun. Um, if you've ever seen my shirts, normally there'll be a picture and it'll be like blue and green together. It'll be all one color or it'll be two colors together. Very rarely do I mix three colors unless I get to the end and I have bottles that have a little bit in them. I like to play around. Again, I try not to waste colors, especially if I run out of that color completely. So what I like to do at the end is just take all the bottles that have a little bit in them and just randomly play around and squirt the colors on and see what happens. So this is orange. Shake that up a little bit. And I just kind of play around. It's like just random colors in there. And then here is my green. And with this, you really don't know how it's going to turn out. And then this is some teal. Try to get that in as many spaces as I can 
And then we're gonna come through with purple. And literally with these bottles that I'm working with, I'm just using them until they're gone. So I'm gonna come back with some more orange. Looks like orange is gonna be my main color since I had the most of it. And then I think I have like a little tiny bit of green, which is good. Nope. <laughs> and then that's basically it. So that's my fun the fun way that I make the shirts that you see that have like the burst of color. It's better to wait, not to waste. And people like color and it's more like kind of a graffiti look. And then again, I place it into a bag and you can't wait to see how that comes out. Okay, so I've put all of the completed shirts into bags and they're gonna sit into this little container it looks like a hospital <laughs> um, little tray um, bucket and I set these aside here and they'll sit there until tonight it is 11 41 so I'll probably come back at about six o'clock at night rinse them um, either wash them depending on how I feel rinse them and then I'll show you that completed process and then the completed actual dry shirt, steamed and everything, ready to go in the next video. Okay, so here's this shirt, the orange and the black. Look at that, it's fresh from just being rinsed. Isn't that a great pattern? So if you've watched from the beginning, you'll see what it looked like, how cool. And then that's the orange and the black. And I'll come back and show you the other. Okay. Here's the second shirt, which was that blue and green. Isn't that crazy? Just me playing around where I squirted my blue and my green. And again, this is the spiral. You can always just bunch up your shirt and randomly place the color anywhere. But this is the spiral. So there's that. Uh, here's that final shirt. This is the blue with purple. Look at that. This, or the teal with purple. The teal was specifically what the person asked me for. So that's the teal and purple design. Okay, this is the front view. And um, there, playing around with colors. Hey friends, I hope you like this video of my tie-dye process. If you like this video and any of the content that I'm putting out, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and also set a reminder so that you can be alerted of future videos. And then also look at the video that I have in the corner, click that and it'll be a video of something that I've probably done before, a friend's video, you never know. But I thank you so much for watching. Take care.